In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about creatine, so stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. My name is Mark. I'm a personal trainer and sports scientist and here on YouTube on my channel I sort of teach and educate people all around the topics health, fitness and nutrition and everything which gets you into shape. Now, today we're talking about the topic creatine because I've been asked by my clients and by you guys on YouTube loads of times of saying, Mark, what is creatine? How do you use it? Where do we get it? Is it safe? All these kinds of questions. These are going to be answered right now. I find the best way to start is by clarifying what is creatine first? Now, when you do your research on Google, what you might come across is something called nitrogenous organic acid. But what does that mean? It basically means that creatine is based on the chemical element N, which is nitrogen. That's all it really means. So, you know, it's a long word, very complicated sort of word for something very simple. Now, your body has the ability to create creatine by itself. Therefore, it is a not essential nutrient. So you don't have to supplement with creatine to get the benefits of it. Your body is able to derive this from glycine and arginine, which are two amino acids. So your body can sort of utilize and do this whole thing. And where that is synthesized is mainly in your kidney and your liver. So that's where your body sort of synthesizes creatine from these two amino acids, glycine and arginine. That's how it really works. Now, once that is all done in your kidney and your liver, then your blood is quite important because your blood sort of gets then is the sort of the transporter of creatine to your skeleton muscle where it's then get used as energy. And that's the really important bit. What I find quite interesting is that 1% of your blood, around 1% is creatine. And then once it reaches your muscle and if it's not really used at that time, then it's getting stored in your muscle as well. What else do we need to know? We need to know it's an ergogenic supplement, meaning it builds muscle. Um, that's what most of the people want. And we're gonna talk about the benefits in a second, so stay tuned. Now, where can you find it? Most of the time when you read stuff very, let's say sporadically, they will all say it's in red meat, red meat, which is true. But actually the highest concentration of creatine is always in the blood, not in the meat itself. But most of us don't drink blood like Dracula or something, so, our source of creatine naturally is most of the time the red meats, but to be very specific, it is found in any sort of species with a spine. Um, and that are actually over 65,000 different species that would have creatine, which we would, if we would eat these, we would get it and derive it from them. So now you know what creatine is, let's talk about what does it actually do. Now in the broadest sense, creatine supplies energy to your body and more specifically to your skeleton muscle. And this happens in the form of creatine phosphate, not creatine. Now the thing is that we, now you know how it gets utilized and so on, but the process is a bit more complicated. We're not gonna go into this in too much detail, but all you need to know is that it is creatine phosphate, not creatine, which supplies the energy. The second thing you need to know is that it increases the formation of ATP. Now ATP is adenosine triphosphate and it's also a form of energy and it's actually the preferred method or usage of energy your muscle wants. But the problem with ATP is it just lasts for a maximum 10 seconds. And the best way to explain this is by looking at this graph. You might have seen this before. It basically shows your um, percentage of energy supply during a period of time of exercise. Meaning, so when I exercise now from 10 seconds to two minutes, what kind of energy is my muscle actually using? So let me talk you through this. In the first 10 seconds, the red, the red marker is ATP. So this is adenosine triphosphate, this one. First 10 seconds, it's basically depleted. It's what all sprinters more or less run on. And this is also really crucial. You will understand why creatine phosphate helps to increase performance and other benefits we will be talking about. It's very easy to understand by looking at this graph. Because now 10 seconds or let's say five seconds are over and your muscles are depleted with ATP. So what do we run on now? Now comes creatine phosphate, green. Okay, this is CP, creatine phosphate. Because what happens is that ATP gets broken down into something called ADP which is adenosine D-phosphate. So it cuts off at a phosphate during this 
this transition here, it gets rid of one phosphate. So there's this cycle where creatine comes in, it adds another phosphate onto the ADP and helps it to create the ATP, the three phosphate. So the, the D just means two, yeah? And the T, let's get this one, the T here means three. That's all that happens. This whole concept of uh, how that breaks down, so it's very complicated, but you know, I try to make it as easy as possible. So what that basically means is that you extend up to 30 seconds, you know, it really varies, but that's how long uh, creatine phosphate will help you to increase performance or power or be able to utilize ATP as an energy source rather than, and the blue line is your glycolysis, your anaerobic glycolysis, which just means it utilizes glycogen as energy, the byproduct or is uh, you know, lactic acid, so you feel sore, you feel all of a sudden you can't run that fast anymore because it's anaerobic, which means you can basically hold your breath and that's how, you know, over this prolonged period of time, that's how you will get your energy. So you first deplete ATP, then you have this whole ATP creatine cycle, which helps to increase the formation of ATP, but then after 30 seconds, you're like, that's all depleted. Now, what are we running on? We're running on your glycogen stores. But at the same time, you know, your aerobic uh, energy system. So throughout breathing, you know, your aerobic, aerobic energy system kicks in. And then around 90 seconds, like one and a half minutes into your run, let's say, you know, you're more or less depleting your glycogen stores, more or less and the main source of energy because the intensity, you cannot keep up the intensity that high throughout two minutes of exercising. And that's sort of how this whole graph hopefully explained ATP to you. I could talk about this probably another half an hour. I tried to just make it short and concise. So the third thing I want you to know is that the supplement creatine is probably the most researched sports supplement out there and it has been used now a couple of decades so there's a bunch of research out there and in the description below a link like a link where you can find some more information you can read through to all of the stuff yourself but let's talk about the benefits so first of all it's performance enhancing that's very obvious because you know you've got more time and more power more atp in your system so obviously your performance is enhanced your strength and speed you know, obviously you, you will be able to push another rep. You will be able to sprint a couple of seconds longer by having more ATP or creatine in your body. Also your power output, meaning the, the amount of power you can produce is very obviously by, you know, looking at this graph again, is enhanced. Muscle mass, muscle mass increase, lean muscle mass increase is also enhanced. So it builds muscle, which is really great work volume, meaning you might be able to perform an additional set of whatever exercise you're doing just because you have more energy in your body to utilize. Muscular endurance is also really, really important. It's not only when you sprint, it's when you lift heavy. It's, it's in so many sports. It's the last second or the seconds which count. If you win or lose, they're determined by some or most of the time muscular endurance. All right, so now you know what creatine is, you know what it does, and the next question in your head is, Mark, what types of creatine are there and which one should I be taking? Now the thing is with that, one thing you need to know, it's the most sold supplement on the planet, it's the most researched supplement on the planet, therefore companies are, you know, they want your money and they will come out with new products probably every month, every year, you know, they will come out with something new, they cooked up in their lab and they want your money. And therefore they will come up with all these fancy names, not from just monohydrate to creatine to ester to create alkaline to liquid to whatever sorts of powder they punch together and say it has this new sort of effect and it's even better than creatine itself. And you're like, what the fuck? How is that possible? So let me tell you a little bit about it. So the first one we're going to be talking about is creatine monohydrate. And that's the one which has been here over decades. It's the most researched one and it's the cheapest one. Guess what? It's the freaking cheapest one. It's the one I've been using, which I use with my clients, which most of the actual athletes I know use is creatine monohydrate. It does the job, right? We all know about it because it has a bunch of research behind it. Now, what is the negative effect of, or what kind of negative effects could be there is that it isn't very soluble in water. So if you've done it before, you see, you, you take a scoop of um, creatine, you put it into water and it sinks to the bottom. 
and you have to shake it around and then you, you know, you work it down. So the soluble part of creatine isn't really great of the monohydrate. Therefore, someone came up with the idea, you know what, let's do micronized creatine, which basically is creatine monohydrate. You just ground it up, make it sort of fine. You have a bigger surface, up to 20 times bigger than the monohydrate, and therefore they promise it has a better absorption potential in your body. Now the downside of it is it's a little bit more expensive than the monohydrate. In my opinion, you can save that money and just go for the monohydrate. So the next one we're going to be looking at is creatine ethyl ester. The abbreviation you will always find is CEE. So what does that actually mean? That just means that a lab cooks up something where they take a creatine molecule and attach an ester molecule to it, and therefore you've got creatine ethyl ester. But why do they do that? Well, the reason is that creatine itself is a Twitter ion or a Twitter ion, which you say it in German, and that just means it has a load to it, has a positive and a negative load, a plus and a minus, and therefore your body has more trouble digesting it or getting the absorption done in your, in your body. Therefore, they found out if they attach an ester to it, you know, all of a sudden they counteract this whole load idea and your body is able to digest and absorb that product better than creatine monohydrate. They actually even promised to say 99% of that will be sort of absorbed in your body and therefore you need less of it. Isn't that great? But then the downside of it is it is also much more expensive than creatine monohydrate. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really make a difference in my opinion. And then the downside of it, it, it has a taste like a battery. Some people say it really tastes like shit. So the last one I want to talk about is cray alkaline creatine. Like, what the fuck is that, right? It's like, don't we have enough creatine out there already? No, another lab came up with the idea, you know what? We need to create something called a buffer creatine. So what they claim is that when creatine enters your body, it's get, getting broken down into creatinine. And that's, a, that's a side effect, or that's sort of the, you know, it's a bit more complicated, but what they say is that creatine itself is not the bad boy, it's creatinine. And only a little percentage of all the other products actually reach your muscle as creatine phosphate, as the energy. But during that process, uh, you know, what you've learned before, it always splits off creatinine. And that has all these bad side effects like bloating and, and all the other ones we're going to be talking about. So this company said, why don't we bring out something which will sort of buffer this whole breaking down process of creatinine and get it straight into the muscle. So they claim saying, it's more stable in liquid, so it doesn't break off the creatinine, which is the bad boy here. And therefore, you know, you will have more actual creatine reaching your muscle. Problem with that is, there's very less research supporting this whole idea. And then at the other end, you guessed it, it's very, very expensive. So in my opinion, the best one to take, the best buck for your money, is going to be creatine monohydrate. It's the very first one, it's the one which has the most research and it's the one which is the safest to take. So let's talk about how to take creatine. Next up, let's have a look at the dosage, when to take it, a couple of side effects, and shall we debunk a couple of myths? Let's do it. So how much creatine should you be taking? Let's talk about the dosage. Generally speaking, three to five grams a day is the normal recommendation for an extended period of time that has no problem whatsoever. You don't need a loading phase and you don't need to cycle creatine on or off. So what does that mean? Now, when you buy creatine supplements, some of them will have in the back, that we'll talk about this loading phase, saying you need to take 20 to 25 grams at least for a week to make sure your body's fully saturated with, with creatine. In my opinion, that is, you know, it's not necessary whatsoever. You can start taking your, one, uh, your, your three to five grams a day, and within a month, latest in a month, your body will be fully saturated and you're gonna be fine. Um, and as well, start taking creatine in the first two to three days, you will already feel the benefit of it. So you don't need any loading phase or whatsoever. The reason why people talk about cycling is because at the beginning stages, when, when research came out, people or scientists used to believe you get addicted to um, creatine. It's like a drug. Why? Because your body, as you learned before, is able to derive creatine itself from certain amino acids. Now, the problem is with that, when you supplement creatine, they, they thought this process in your body will shut down and as soon as you stop taking creatine, your body will not be able to utilize its own creatine anymore. Therefore, you're addicted to creatine, which is bollocks. That's not true. So therefore, you're safe to take it. You, can, you don't have to cycle it. 
The only time you might want to cycle creatine is if you're a competitive athlete and your sport has to do with weigh-ins and weight, body weight. Because creatine will make sure that your body will hold water, therefore you will be heavier, uh, which we will talk about in a second. But if that is a concern to you as a competitive athlete, then you might need to cycle it off before your competition to make sure you, you make your weight, you will be able to perform at that level. Now, when we talk about side effects, in my opinion, there are no side effects really. Just a very small percentage might feel nausea, stomach cramps, bloating, diarrhea, muscle cramps. These are sort of side effects which, you know, every company has to talk about side effects which might happen to a little percentage of people. And which is interesting is that all the new products which come out, which want to sort of bash the monohydrate, they all claim that these side effects only happen with monohydrate, with the CEE and with the crealkaline and all these new ones which are attached to something, where the creatine molecule is attached to something, you won't have any of these side effects. If you are one of these people who have these side effects, you might want to try the micronized, you know, where the surface is a bit smaller, therefore you, you might be able to digest it better. But most of the time, in my experience, when, when bloating and stomach cramps and stuff happens is when you have either a really shitty creatine or when the creatine is normally hooked up to a sugar molecule, like you get them, you get loads of these uh, sugary creatines, which are really bad. And they actually, you know, they cause all these side effects, it's not the creatine itself. So one thing about water retention where people say, well, that's a bad thing about uh, creatine, you're gonna be holding water. Well, the good thing about it is it's intercellular, which means because um, creatine is stored in your muscle, that's also where it binds the water, therefore your muscle looks fuller, volumized, you look bigger, right? Compared to subcutaneous water retention is when you look a bit flabby, when your vascularity goes, when you like, you know, when you look bloated, that is when, when it's when we talk about subcutaneous water retention, and that is what you don't want. You want intercellular water retention. That is what happens when you take creatine. So therefore, it's safe to take on a cut. It's safe to take when you do weight loss or when you're on a weight loss regime. So there's no need to worry about that. All I said is when you're a competitive athlete, you might need to think about it. And if you do your weight loss, you always need to know that when you step on the scale, there's one to two liters of water at least holding in your muscle mass. So just bear that in mind. So now let's talk about when to take it. That's freaking easy. You can take it anytime. You can take it with anything. So with any foods, with whatsoever. There's something you need to experiment. For some people, it works better before workouts, after workouts, but at the end of the day, just freaking take it. And now at the end, let's talk about some myths. Now the first myth, which is very common, it says, well, if you take caffeine, caffeine counteracts the effects of creatine. Why is that? Because caffeine is a diuretic and it's a stimulant. It sort of, it wants to get rid of water, whereas creatine holds water. And that's where the whole confusion comes and says, well, if you take both, that can be counteractive. And that's actually a myth that has been proven wrong. It actually is beneficial taking creatine and caffeine at the same time. There's nothing to worry about. You will still get the benefits of both. Creatine is also not a roid. I can't say that word because otherwise YouTube cuts out my video, right? So it's not a, you can read it yourself. So the last myth I want to talk about is that sugar is not necessary to absorb creatine better. This is just something from the supplement companies out there wanting you to believe this because they, like I told you before, they link creatine molecules to sugar molecules and make a new name and more proprietary blend and say this is going to be better because your body's going to absorb it better and you're going to have more creatine in your muscle to be used and blah 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 blah. Something don't believe it, it's a freaking myth. You don't need sugar to absorb creatine better. You can take the freaking monohydrate, the cheapest one on the planet, and you will get the benefits of it. All right, this is it. This is all you need to know about creatine. I hope this video helped you to make an informed decision if creatine is something you want to take or not. And you know, now you know a bit more about it. Generally speaking, if you think I missed anything, just leave a comment in the comment box below. I'm here to have a discussion with you guys and make sure that you get the most value out of these videos. Again, make sure that you also check out some other videos of mine here. I've got loads of stuff on my channel going on. And yeah, if you like this, it would be awesome if you punch the like button. That would really help me out. And punch the subscribe button if you want to see more of my stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.